How's it going? My name's Ethan, and today we're gonna to be looking at the all new Stump Jumper Evo. Specifically, we're gonna be diving into some of the kinematics of the chassis. Rear suspension design has a profound impact on the capability and handling of a bike. So we're gonna look at the leverage ratio, anti-squat, anti-rise, and axle path of the new Stump Jumper Evo, and the reasons we tuned each of those the way that we did, so that you can understand a bit of the engineering that went into making it instant rally. The first thing we're gonna talk about is leverage ratio. Leverage ratio is a ratio from how much force at the rear axle is required to move your suspension. It is an inverse relationship, so having a high leverage ratio means less force at the rear axle will move your suspension. The Evo leverage graph is what's known as a progressive curve, meaning it starts high in the first part of the travel. More mechanical advantage here means those smaller bumps get absorbed easier. The leverage is lower at the bottom of the travel, which means it takes bigger and bigger hits to compress the shock and make it bottom out. So Evo has the best of both worlds, small bump comfort and resistance to bottoming out. However, one of the biggest things about leverage rate is that it can't be divorced from shock tune. So we have a program called RX Tune for the recommended experience tune, where we bring a shock in-house and our suspension team will tune the internals to perfectly match the chassis that it's going on. And that's key to delivering the performance of the Evo, engineered balance between frame design and shock tune. Moving on to anti-squat, when you accelerate on a mountain bike every time you pedal, a lot more happens than just your forward momentum. You have the chain tension force, which is acting to compress your rear end. There's also a load transfer. As the bike accelerates underneath you, your center of gravity moves backwards. And all of that goes to squat your suspension. Anything we design into the kinematics of a frame to combat that is considered anti-squat. To the rider, anti-squat manifests as a bike that pedals well. So when you have a really high anti-squat number, you have an efficient pedaling platform that combats that load transfer really well. Looking at the graph of our anti-squat, you can see that all the way up to the dynamic sag point, it is at least 100%, which means we are very efficiently combating that squat force. In that range that a rider would actually be pedaling all the way through sag, these anti-squat numbers are very high. It tapers off deep in the shock stroke, but pedaling that far into the travel is pretty unlikely, and reducing anti-squat here helps limit pedal kickback. Anti-rise is probably the least understood part of mountain bike suspension. Basically, whenever you hit the brakes, there's another weight transfer of your body weight moving forward, and so there's a tendency of the rear shock to extend or rise. Anything we design in the bike to combat that is considered anti-rise. You can think of it like having an anchor that pulls your butt down to the trail. So having really high anti-rise, 100% and above, is like having a really heavy anchor that is pulling your weight backwards. 0% no anchor, so when you feather the brakes, you just flip straight over the bars. But where it gets confusing is how much of that anchor we really want, how much anti-rise is good for mountain biking. And what our suspension engineers have found is that 100% and above ends up feeling really jarring to the rider. As you're descending, we are trying to force that shock to keep from moving, so it's trying to extend, we're trying to compress it, and that means that it is not able to be supple and active. And having active suspension is where you get all your traction. So on the graph, of the Stump Jumper Evo anti-rise, you'll see that we settled on somewhere around the 40 to 50 range. And there are two important things about that graph. The first is that it's in that happy mid zone. So we are combating roughly half of the weight transfer. You're not gonna go straight over the bars, but also the suspension is free to still smoothly move. And that's what's providing you with traction as you're going down the really steep stuff. The other important thing about that graph is the shape. It is practically dead level. And we designed that very intentionally because anti-rise provides a lot of rider confidence. As you're descending steep stuff, you know what your suspension is gonna feel like as you're hitting the brakes. So on Stump Jumper Evo, you will have predictable handling when you hit the brakes and active suspension for maximum traction. Last up is axle path. This graph is a little bit different. It's rotated 90 degrees, so you'll see the sag is horizontal, which lets us show you a picture of exactly what the rear axle is doing as it goes through travel. It starts out with a rearward curve, and a lot of places are calling this a rearward axle path, but this one is a little bit different. So if you look at the sag line, it comes at the point where the axle is furthest away. But as soon as a rider is on the bike at the sag zone, 
the axle is no longer traveling rearwards. It's traveling forwards, and we did that for a reason. The issue with a rearward axle path is as you are trying to lean backwards over the bike, your wheelbase is still growing. The axle is actually fighting to move away from you. This helps carry speed over obstacles, but it detracts a little from the playfulness of the bike. By starting rearward up to the sag point, the Stump Jumper Evo is taking learnings from our gravity bikes, like Demo, like Enduro, but you still have the fun, poppy, playful feel that we really want in a trail bike. This is just some of the engineering that went into the kinematics of Stump Jumper Evo, but we don't ride a kinematics graph, we ride a complete bike. We developed the Evo with the whole picture in mind, adjusting each aspect to provide capability, stability, and control. And there's so much more going on here. We have a two position horse link that changes bottom bracket height. We have a three position headset that adjusts head tube angle and a SWAT down tube that now holds 15% more stuff on your ride. All that put together isn't just the ultimate trail bike, it's instant rowdy.